Beautiful. Talks about life. Scene Dawn, take one. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Talks About Life. I'm here with Don Jeans. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I like to start out with the question, uh, where were you born and where are you from? I was actually born in a place called Lufkin, Texas. And I'm from, you could say I'm from Humble, Texas, which is 30 minutes north of downtown Houston. Mm. Uh, and But before that, I, I, I was raised on a ranch uh, in the middle of nowhere, about an hour and a half north of downtown Houston, and that's why I was born in Lufkin, Texas. It's called uh, Moscow, Texas, and a uh, thousand acre ranch hmm. over there, a mile from any neighbor, sleeping by ponds and run barefoot on hay barrels. And you're a like real life cowboy. I, I am, I am. My father was a, a career cattle rancher, 40 years, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, and uh, my grandfather is still alive, was a career cowboy, has, um, is, lives on the same ranch he's lived on since 1950 hmm. and has been honored by the American Brahmin Association for 30 years of purebred line breeding and Brahmin cattle. Yeah. Nice. So is, because uh, you've also done bull riding. Did, uh, did some is, bull riding. Is that just kind of part of being a cowboy or... or a can you do each one individually? Uh, yeah, it's just the influence. My my uncle um, was a rodeo announcer and, and rode bulls, and my dad rode bareback. And you know, we grew up listening to those stories, and so we put a bucking barrel in our backyard when I was young, which is basically some you take some garage door springs and you double them over, and then you tie a big barrel to it with the sides banged in and a carpet around it, and you have two people shake it. And mm. we started doing that, and that was a lot of fun. And then we had to we had to go try it out, and so. I rode in about five rodeos until my brother broke his collarbone, and I was 15, and uh, to be honest, it scared me. And I was like, I don't want to break things. And so, uh, so he was, yeah, yeah, he was driving, and I was like, well, I mean, since he drives, I guess I'll take a break as well. And then we just never went back, because yeah. he started doing gymnastics. And then where did acting, or when did acting come into the picture? <clears throat> uh, he, Acting came in, I was seven years old, this is shortly after we moved kind of into the city, and I had a, a teacher who was just like, who wants to be the lead in the play, and I was a kid, and I loved attention, so I was like, I'll play the lead, let's do this, and so I was the lead in the country mouse and the city mouse, um, but moreover, I, uh, I just, I remember watching movies, and after every movie, I'd be like, I want to be that person, and then I'd watch another one, I want to be that person, somewhere in my mind, it clicked that these are actors. Mm -hmm. So if you're an actor, you can be whatever you want to be. You can be a million different people. And uh, that's kind of true. I've gotten to live inside those those roles. That's been very neat. Um, but also, I watched two movies that were really, really affecting me. One was Out of Africa. And it affected me a lot. I don't know why. It's just such a, a beautiful movie. And then um, My Girl, Macaulay Culkin. I, I was depressed for like two weeks after I saw that movie because Macaulay Culkin died mm. uh, and he loved her so much. But it wasn't that I was depressed, it was that they, they affected me so much. They moved me in such a way that I was like, wow! To have the ability to move a person so dramatically, emotionally, um, I thought, I want to I wanna be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing that got me into it is I, I uh, so I kind of forgot about it when I was getting into teen years because girls and sports. And then w my friends were like, um, I was like, I need an elective, man. What's an easy elective? And they were like, acting. You go in there and you could sleep or do whatever you want. I was like, that's a good idea. I'll go to acting class. And I had some really great teachers and they would not let me sleep through class. Uh, and I ended up getting a, a theater scholarship to a junior college because of one I, um, UIL one-act plays and, and doing speech competitions with uh, monologues and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, And it just kind of took off from there. Uh, how old were you at that point? Uh, I mean, 18, doing, doing plays in the one-act. One act. And then I, I, did, I got the scholarship, and I did a year of the scholarship. I also, uh, to, to, for a job, a side job, I worked in the theater building all the sets. So I would act mm. in them and I would build all the sets. Uh, and then my mom, one day, she was like, you know, you can't get a theater degree. I'm afraid you'll never get a job. So you gotta do it, you gotta get your business degree. And so I was like, 
oh, okay, all right. He's like, your uncle, he's, he does really good. He's got a marketing. So I went and got my marketing degree, and I went and got a real job. She's like, just do a year. And I think she thought, like, if I, if I got my business degree and I did a year of business that I would just go off and because I'd be making money, but that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. I was, like, doing a movie while I was working. And then finally I had a really good friend who, uh, who I, I lived with in college, and he moved to New York, and he was having the time of his life. And he calls me one day. It's 7 o'clock in the morning there. It's like 4.30 in the morning in New York or, or 5.30. And he's like, bro, I went from a party to a party to a party, and I can't get home. Look me up on the subway. Tell me where I should go. And I did it. When I hung up the phone, I was like, this guy's having the time of his life. He's loving what he's doing. I'm over here working 10-hour days, and I hate it. I'm moving to New York. And it was from that point that I decided I was going to go do it for a career. Wow. Uh, yeah. And how did it go in New York for you? It went really well. I did a lot of uh, off, off, I don't know if I can cuss, but fuck off Broadway. Yeah, so yeah. far off, it was almost in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and the writer, producer, and director was all the same person, and they were just like, whatever you want to do, just go, with, take it as far as you want to take it. And I would take it way too far. And they'd be like, oh, all right, all right, Don, all right, just <laughs> bring it. <laughs> Bring it back a little bit, because that's ridiculous. Right. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. I uh, just where, uh, where Eagles Dare Theater, the Looking Glass Theater, um, American Place Theater, all those little ones that one of my best ones that you can still see some photos online is I I did a, a play called Pulling Teeth and I got to play a uh, a dentist who gets in with the mob and his job for the mob is to pull all the teeth of the dead bodies that they bring to him and dispose of them so that the bodies can't be identified and then mm -hmm. he gets in trouble because he didn't do one or something like that. It was really fun. That was, huh. uh, it was a really neat time. And then uh, how long were you in New York before deciding to move to LA? I was in New York for two years and um, it was going really well. I had a great job bartending on the Upper West Side and I was doing a lot of theater which was very fulfilling. But uh, when it came to real jobs, uh, paying jobs, uh, the the casting directors were like, "Look, you don't sing and you don't dance. You got blonde hair and blue eyes. Go to Los Angeles. Get out of here." And two of them told me that, and I was like, "Well, okay." And so I I tricked my then roommate into moving to Los Angeles with me, and I started making money. So that's that's where I am now. Was your roommate also? He an was actor? an actor as well. Yeah. 